Okay. I am really excited. Um, about? about? I've got yeah. some great news. And? About? Um, well, it's about... Uh, are you pregnant? It's about today. Oh. oh what's happening yeah. today? Um, we are... Um, well, fuck, you're going to find out. It's an all-new Smartless. Smart. You guys. Hi. We just had a little connection problem with Will. It sounded sure like did. your Hal from 2001. Yeah. I, I'm glad you got it all worked out. I know, me too. I, um... Was there a ghost in the machine? I guess so. Right? That's the... Wasn't that a band? Uh, that, was a, that was an album the police did. It was by the police. Yeah, very right. good album. By the Remember way, that? the police... Yeah. You know, I just... I used to listen to them all the time. And we yeah. don't hear about them... In, in, you know. Well, because Sting went off on his own. I know, but um, it's just a good, good memory. I'm, I'm when he went, when he went on his own, do you, is, is it accurate to say that he defunded the police? <laughs> wow. It, I, I don't guess know, it's it early. Be, it's early. It's really early. <laughs> it's early. What am I going to do? They're not all going to be home runs, JB. Jason, so did we miss you on Sunday because we missed, because you just weren't feeling it? Or were you out of town? No, I was, uh, I, I was flying uh, back to work. I left at noon. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Amanda said. Uh, apropos of nothing, Shawnee, I was sent a picture from um, someone, uh, well, you and Eric Idle, um, in a picture together. It looked like it might have been a bowling alley. You guys no, it was were? a roller rink. Okay, so I was I was close. That was just and yesterday. Pretty close. And that was just sort of just like a date you guys had, <laughs> like maybe meet me at the roller skating that's rink. A great <laughs> tell, tell me what you look like so I no, can wait recognize you. First of all, that's crazy. I wonder who sent you that. Oh, was it Kevin Nealon? Uh, Eric Idle and I uh, share an attorney, the great Tom Hoberman. Oh, okay, great. Um, yeah, no, it was uh, Kevin Nealon's wife, uh, Susan Yagley, who's a very funny actress person. Uh, she she decided to have her, her birthday party at a roller derby, like a roller, roller. What is that called? Roller rink. It's a roller skating rink. Roller skating rink, yeah. Uh -huh. And so I... Was uh, too have you nervous. been drinking? Have you been drinking this morning? Because you, you feel like you've been. <laughs> no, it's too early. He's got a latte going. <laughs> have you been eating? Um, no, not at all. Now, you haven't eaten there... anything yet. And so, Scotty, I was really nervous. No, I haven't eaten anything. So, Scotty, I was really nervous. So, I didn't. Scotty's put frying up some because... donut holes. <laughs> <laughs> I, but they did have like pizza and cake, and oh, I God. had all that. It was and popcorn. It was. Great. I described Sean the other day as junk food curious. Uh, so. <laughs> hey, uh, were there any terrible hey. accidents there at the yes, roller skating okay. rink? Yeah, because you so, can really, really hurt yeah, your so tailbone. Oh, do you have any skates. good? Do you have any good roller skate rink uh, uh, accident stories? Can't wait to ask the guest. <laughs> yes. So Scotty, so I didn't want to put him on because I'm on blood thinners. I'm almost done with my blood thinners because mm -hmm. of my AFib. Right? Hang, hang on. Whoa. What does a roller skating accident have to do with? Because blood if thinners? you hit your head or something, you could bleed like you could bleed out and die. Oh, way to think about the worst case scenario. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I was so the first thirty seconds, my friend Kevin, who you both met, Kevin and Carrie, sure, Kevin, bam, mashed his head on the on the fucking wood floor, wiped out immediately, and so I ran over to him. I was like, "Are you all right? You're right." He's like, "Yeah, no." I go, "Are you seeing stars?" And he's like, "No." Which no, meant but yes. When do they get here? But that's yeah. a bummer if he looked at you and he says he's not seeing any stars. I mean, that's yeah. got a <laughs> that's insult to his injury, you know. God, Will, you really? I'm glad you rebooted. <laughs> I mean, yeah, somebody <laughs> slept really well. Yeah, I did sleep well. I anyway, very well. roller derby, but good idea for a, for a birthday party, right? For an adult. No. Sounds no. like not a good idea. It's up there with an ice skating. You've ring. just described why it's not a good idea. No, Kevin. Kevin's totally fine. Oh, good. Is he? But I. I walked because I didn't want to put the skates on, so Scotty had skates on, and I walked with him around the thing while he skated. And that's so dumb. A little bit. Well, it's like kind of on brand. <laughs> yeah. You know, now they've got at these at these rinks, um, you know, like an old man, old woman walker that can help you uh, ice skate or roller skate. They didn't have that in my day. You just had to yes, kinda, I like, see that the kids had wall. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but so Eric Idle was there. I never met Eric Idle from Monty Python. I yeah. was like, oh my god, uh, just, what a genius! Yeah, yeah. incredible. He's a really nice guy. Did he um, did he ask for like a, a drink from you, or was he like, hey, can I get a Diet Coke? <laughs> just bring my car up, boy. <laughs> <laughs>
No, he was really nice. Uh, whose guest is it today? It's my it's guest. In, and how do you feel do about your choice today, Will? I feel really, really good. Really? Yeah, you know why? You know what I like? I like uh, I like international superstars. Oh, my God. A lot. This is a legit, you don't often. Are we going to see stars? Are we going to see stars? You're going to see a major international superstar, and I'm, I'm embarrassing him, but it's so true. And But on top of it, or sort of not on top of it, beneath it, he's a really, really, really great guy that I've had the good fortune of spending a little bit of time with over the years. Yeah. Super, super good dude. Um, and then you forget that he sold gajillion records That's a lot. I, I mean a gajillion records over the years as a member of a rock and roll hall of fame band and then as an inc equally impressive solo career he's in the songwriters hall of fame he has written multiple massive hits and thought? he's an actor and he's an incredible uh, philanthropist and he's got a new docu-series uh, uh, about uh, the his story uh, uh, I think it's called Thank You Good Night um, God, yeah, I guys, I, 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 once I start getting, if I start saying specific things, you're just going to guess it. So I'm just going to say, guys, please allow me to introduce you to the one, the only, the phenomenal Mr. John Bon Jovi. <laughs> oh, that's triple A list. Look at, I mean, <laughs> oh my it is God. triple. No triple. one sings higher. <sighs> yeah. Or better. Or better. Or better. Or hey, better. Oh, oh my Hi gosh, there. Good John Bon Jovi. Morning. I this saw so I cool. saw John like six months ago or something last summer, and I was like, would you ever consider doing our podcast? And he said yes, and it took a minute to organize. He's a very busy man, and I'm so happy you're here. John, good to see you, man. Good I'm morning. so happy to be here. I'm a huge fan. I listen all the time, and I watch the entire uh, series that you guys did on the all road. That oh crazy my documentary. In the dead of winter. Yes, yes. it was great. It now, was great. Listener, uh, we have John Bon Jovi from the White House. Uh, I mean, you, you look like oh, you you're look like in you're uh, the kind of place I would oh. love to live. <laughs> Are, you're doing well, clearly, right? This is a nice... You, 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 I see a lot of, of, and, of house envy just in the pre-roll when you were talking about John's house. <laughs> well, look at me. I'm doing a hostage video here. I, <laughs> <laughs> I need to up my situation. Uh, but no, and I see a Patriots jersey. Are you a Patriots fan? Oh, yeah, look at I see the background in my office. Yes, yes, I'm a huge Patriots fan. That is Bill Belichick's um, hoodie. Now, oh, my God, they're right, the short sleeve. Why did he wear a short sleeved hoodie? Fashion statement, right? Yeah, I don't fashion. Know. Well, no, he also, he might run hot. Like, he wants the thing, but he I also run runs a little bit hot. But my question is, hot? who cuts them? <laughs> Do you know, John, who cuts them? I don't know who cuts them. No, knowing that when you look closely, I think he probably, I think he cuts them with a butter knife. Yeah, I don't well, that know. and just has an odd. He's got sweaty forearms, and I've never met anyone with that. Um, maybe Thoreau came over and gave him the snip. It might you know? be a yeah, Justin. Maybe he's giving Justin Thoreau a run for his money. Well, listen, I think if you're winning that many championships, you know you're doing something right, and he doesn't want to mess with whatever system he's got going. Um, yeah. Why, uh, why do you have um, directors' chairs there? Just just to hang out in? Because I'm a groupie, and when I, I did my little movie career, I actually stole the entire chair, not the back. You guys that make real <laughs> movies, I took the whole chair. You took the smart. whole chair. <laughs> well, you made a That's bunch a of chair. movies. Uh, I want to get into that in a minute. You've, you've, you've done a lot, uh, actually quite a surprising amount of acting. Yeah, I'm it's not a surprising fascinating career. You, yeah, I think that, but you started as a singer, as a, as a musician, and I kind of want to talk about yeah, what I was know that? How you know you could sing? Well, like yeah. What? Like, how? What was that first thing? Growing up in New Jersey, what was that early music scene, and how did you plug into it? You know, how do you get? How do you get started? Yeah. What do you do? Any kid that's um, all of our ages um, thinks of three things when they're thirteen. You want to be a baseball player, or a rock and roll star, or an astronaut. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah, you strum the tennis racket, and you you think you can sing. Yeah. When you're playing in the garages in the, the school dance with your first band, um, the benefit of that for me was that the drinking age in New Jersey was 18. Ah, so at right. 16, I could be playing in a bar. Ah, and I loved it so much that I didn't have the, and I didn't have the responsibilities of a career path yet, a job, a higher education thought. You know, it was like music, music, music. I yeah. like music. And because... Uh, my parents were somewhat supportive. Their attitude was, if you're going to be in a bar at one or two in the morning, at least we know where you are. Right, and they right. saw that I was 
you know, really, really wanting to pursue that career path. And then I was also blessed because, you know, I wrote Runaway when I was 20. So That's I got a record deal at 21. Yeah, I want, that was your first hit in... in 1983, I put that out independently without the band and then uh, got a record deal. And it's been the same record deal for 40 years. Wow, that's wow. great. Amazing. Was it ever, was, did you, so you started singing so young uh, that w was it, was it, was singing uncool at that age? You oh. know, cause like I, when I was a little kid, like I always just thought th singing was not, was not, was not cool because I was so young. What was it like at your age uh, when you did it? All the centerfolds of Circus Magazine was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. in the late seventies, it was like <laughs> yeah. Zeppelin and Aerosmith and yeah. Queen and and yeah, Leonard right. Skinner and Springsteen and all the. And then remember that Bruce Springsteen and Southside Johnny were from twenty five miles south of my house. Wow. So chances are, with ten Asbury Jukes and seven members of the E Street Band, by playing in those bars, you're going to see real live rock stars. Right. And when yeah. you're 16, that's like seeing Santa Claus. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. all of these things were incredibly inspirational. And being a lead singer in a rock band, Mister Jason Sir, yeah, is pretty fucking good. Uh, yeah, I was, <laughs> I yeah, I I was thinking that. more about ballads, probably in my head, <laughs> as opposed to a rock and roll. No, the stage. ballads work. Yeah. The ballads work. They I've, work too. Are right? you <laughs> kidding? Of course, the but, ballads work. Are you crazy, <laughs> JB? Think it but through, John, dude. Uh, are, uh -huh. Yeah. Are you? But here's what blows my mind about your voice. I always comment about how, like, your um, your pipes are just incredible. The fact that. I mean, that's like no, way, it. way, way, way up there. And not Those a lot of people can do that. And strong. And where do you find at such a young age, because people are already trepidatious about opening their mouth and am I going to be able to sing? And you're just wailing. Like, where does that confidence come from? Like, to really go for those notes at such a young age and write those songs that are massive. Na naivete. It was, I yeah. was too stupid yeah. to know any better. Yeah. I didn't study. <laughs> yeah. Really? You just got in front of a mic and, and yelped until it made sense. Yeah. You know, I regret. That's a high C, Sean. The yeah, high note is a fucking C. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's like a soprano. It's not good. You know, when you're, I'm going to be 62 um, Saturday. Wow. I'm 62 oh, years old. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Hitting a high C. Can you do it? I can hit a, I, I can squeak out a, a, a C, yeah. Right. So does it, does it, does it start to leave just like, you know, uh, yeah, Tom Brady? Yeah, the big thing about anymore, this huge yeah. documentary that we just did, the, the parallel story, and Sean, you'll, you relate to this. I went, I underwent a, a massive surgery for the first time in my life. In your a throat? Vocal, for your vocal, vocal cords? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. That's scary. Yeah, that's what I'm going through right now. And hence this, um, but what, not your typical nodule. Yeah. Because I really have studied singing for a lot of years. You have But to, I had yeah. what's called now a medialization. And if you're at all familiar with that. No. One chord was atrophying while the strong one was pushing the weak one around and I wasn't singing well. And it was, oh, wow. I couldn't understand it. And this is all in the last two years since the surgery. And uh, they put a plastic implant outside the cords to strengthen them. Wow. So I'm still in the rehab stage, and it's disheartening. John, wow, when you I'm first, what was that like when you first yeah. noticed that? When you when you had that, do you remember having that first yeah. thing of like, shit, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, yeah? Yeah, and, and what you would do is compensate. You know, mm. you were like, well, that didn't work today, so let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. And finally, you're standing on your head trying to right. hit a note. And you, you would compensate and, and to a point where it just wasn't very good anymore. And other things start getting out of whack. Way, way out of whack. And then mm -hmm. your mind. How, how, do you, how, is it, how are you feeling now? How is it going? I'm 20 months post-surgery. I would say I'm 90% there. And you still got to get the ghosts out of the machine, as you guys are saying. Mm -hmm. The ones in your head. Yeah, you know, yeah, right? yeah for sure. The ones sure. that are saying, now that you're over, back to let's just say you don't have to compensate anymore. Your mind still has to remind your body that it's fixed. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to compensate any so longer. You don't, right, right. What so you about the, the absolute panic and horror of going oh. under the knife? Yeah. And, and uh, when I wake up, I hope that, A, I can, 
I can speak, and in Julie a perfect Andrews. world, I can still sing. Like I, I, I'm sure your research on doctors must have been intense. Yeah, and, the, and this is what I do, right? This is yeah. this is. I'm a singer. Yeah, the doctor. I knew the doctor that did Julie Andrews. So we all, you and I, both know that story. And you went to him too, and so did I for a lot of years. Yeah. <sighs> And then, uh, but the guy that I found in Philadelphia, the greatest thing he said after I exhausted everything, every bit of what I call voodoo, every Eastern medicine, every laser, every dietary singing lessons, everything I possibly could. And I did 15 shows and it just was not working. And I went to see him and I said, I can give you 100% of 80%. And he says, is that good enough? And I said, no, I'm going to quit. He says, now we can talk about this surgery. Oh, wow. And he says, and I guarantee you nothing. He says, but if you work hard, this will give you your best shot. So I've been diligent in my recovery and hoping that, you know, everything's going to be all right. But I, I, I don't know. Are you yeah. bullish uh, on uh, being able to get out there and tour again? I'm hoping to be. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. being bluntly honest. You know, yeah. I, I, if I'm not great, I'm not going. Yeah, well, yeah, but, yeah. but 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 hang on. I mean, like there are plenty of musicians and bands that I would easily pay a top dollar yeah, to but go so see, what? even if they. But even if they can't make the song sound like it did when they recorded it fucking thirty years ago, just I still want to see them doing it and just move the mic away from their mouth a little bit when they reach for that high seat, like. I yeah. mean, but <laughs> look at John's like, well, no. John, but, but you're providing more than, you know, incredible singing. You guys want to see you, John, yeah. watch YouTube. I'm not, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> not interested. Well, what about your bandmates? What are they, are they, are they, are they, are they understanding of that position or are they saying fucking come on? No, you know, we are, we are actively rehearsing. We did a oh, couple good. of days this week. Everybody was here in New Jersey. Um, just running it hard for a couple of days and seeing, uh, measuring the progress. Oh, that's great. Because I have so this exciting. great new record. I feel optimistic about the record. I love the film. Um, a, a guy named Deep, uh, Deepak, Gotham Chopra, Deepak's son, directed yeah. it. It oh, was cool. a two year, oh, great. Um, four part docuseries that'll air on Hulu. But I'm very happy with it because it's honest. on the band. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. Our that's so year. great. It's our 40th anniversary right now. I That's can't wait so to see that. Mind blowing. Forty years. It, I, I feel like I became really well, like a lot of people, really well aware of you guys with the massive. First of all, your massive hit, "Living on a Prayer," yeah. which. It, well, there's tons of them. Yeah, you I mean, there's tons of them, but that was the... Ten different songs. I, you know, of course, songs. but that's the, I'm, I'm sort of like yeah. for me, that was the first one that really I was like, holy shit! And that you guys kind of, do you remember the first time? playing that when, when it was a hit and playing it in front of an audience and everybody going like, fuck yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> like, maybe not the first time, but what was interesting about that song is we really didn't know what we had mm. because it was so different. It didn't sound like anything on the radio. And, yeah. you know, it, it had a, a Motown kind of a bass line. It had the boy-girl story that is almost Shakespearean at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. And it's, 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 it's so... You Give Love a Bad Name was the first single on that record and it was a number one song and that was pretty evident and obvious that it would be. But when we put out Living on a Prayer, I, I, I thought, yeah, it should be second because who knows what it's going to do. And then, of course, you know, it's one of the biggest pop songs. Yeah, can I tell you something about um, You Give Love a Bad Name? I guess. So my first, do <laughs> my first dog was named Buzzy and when I was, <laughs> when I was yeah, when I was uh, potty oh, training geez. him, he would go outside and he would poop on the lawn. So I changed the words uh, from whatever, you know, from what they are to. Right. There's, there's poop on the lawn and you're to blame, Buzzy. You give dogs a bad name. I love that. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, there's poop on the lawn. And you're too this blame, is the family buzzy, member that you just stop inviting, you know? <laughs> no, we're not having Thanksgiving this year, Sean. Sorry. You know? It's <laughs> but wait, but I have other stories. Sean, tell me it. more about your music career because I, I didn't get the chance, but Dorothea saw the play. Oh, and, so and good. My wife saw the play and was talking so incredibly about not only your playing, but your singing as well. How did um, you keep it eight days a week? Well, that's so nice. It was just a play. I didn't sing. 
but um, but I played. Oh, yeah. you didn't have to sing. No, thank. I'll never do that again. But his Same. voice, she was probably talking about. He did a whole different voice for this character. That yeah. that's I, what, I, I remember. Will and I kind of. I don't, Will, did we look at each other like yeah. when he came out? I think we've told the story. It's right? a big swing. <laughs> a big yeah. swing. We looked Huge. at each other like, oh boy, Uh-oh. here we fucking. <laughs> go. Because it's one of those um, moments, John, where you're like, it's either going to be uh, great. Or it's going to be white terrible. Out. Yeah, and <laughs> what are we going to say to him backstage? <laughs> yeah. And like 30 seconds past that point, it's like, oh, no, we're yeah. in good hands. He's yeah, pulling yeah, this off. Sweet, and it was, a, it was a big, yeah, it was a different voice, a whole a gate and everything. Anyway, I, said to, I said to Jason when I saw him right after the show, I said, can I guess your thought <laughs> bubble when I first came out? He said, yeah, and it was just, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait john did you ever do broadway did you ever do no. a show on broadway? no god you no. were great For, oh, the yeah, stage yeah. to me is the you know the stage so yeah, yeah I, of course. I didn't need that i didn't need that um even in the learning experience for me when i went into to try to to learn to act and i studied for a couple years before i ever even went for an audition it was the opportunity to grow in the arts it was just yeah. a different avenue in the arts that I could bring that back then to the fold, different material to write about, different humility, standing on the audition line, and, yeah, you know, yeah. being turned down before you even walked into the room. Yeah. Uh, and all of that humility that I brought back while I was learning about the craft was, was incredibly formative. What was your feeling about that as you were starting to learn about acting and quote unquote study it? And because I, I'm always sort of a, a little pessimistic about if it's something we can learn to do. I think it's all something we all know how to do. It's just freeing yourself up. But like, did you think it was like, oh, this is a real craft, a real art form that I'm enjoying? Oh, yeah. Or were you like, oh, this is just learning how to be full of shit. I mean, both both are valid, both are mm-hmm. true, but <laughs> there's just, just different perspectives on what it is. And, and how did, where did it find itself on you? I just have too much respect for y'all. And, and I immensely respect the craft that I, I wouldn't dare think that even Pacino or De Niro, if I put a microphone in their face and said, sing me a song, right. that they'd be any good at it. Right. I think in order to be good at it, you should learn how to do it. Yeah, amen. And right. so I studied for two years privately, not in classes, but uh, privately until I, I was confident enough to even, you know, try to get an audition. Yeah. I had too much respect for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and what was the one thing uh, that you, that made you feel like you wanted to take on that challenge of, of expanding your creative juices from music to acting? I had had um, five records uh, by that point, and... Slippery was our third. That was a monster. New Jersey was a monster. Then I wrote the soundtrack to the Young Guns record, and I, you know, I win all the awards with that. So there was this kind of stupid ego moment in the band's history where you're like, you think you're too smart. Mm-hmm. The incredible thing about starting over with something in the arts that you know nothing about, but you've had so many other life experiences, mm-hmm. it brings you a great humility. And so that when you take that back to music, it was, it was an opportunity for me to share that with the guys and for them to then learn from that, yeah. you know, and it humbled all of us to go. I think that's a big reason why when we went into the 90s and the grunge movement happened, we didn't even slow down. We right. still had hits. Yeah, we still yeah. kept going. We, we had more international growth than ever. And, yeah. and all of that was, I think, a direct result of my sitting in that basement apartment in Manhattan with Harold Guskin for years you know, getting yelled at. And yeah. so I, I really, really loved the process of acting. The bitch was whenever, and you guys know this well, I would go in and they'd say, anytime you get a spark in this town, you take off for a year and go on the road. We don't think you're serious about it. I said, I'm fucking serious about it, yeah. but you pay me two right. cents <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm six on the call sheet. Right. You know, I, what yeah, am I going to do here? A There's cut. a stadium waiting in, in, you know, wherever. Right, 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 right. What was that first film that I, I remember you did? Moonlight um, and Valentino was a girly movie. Moonlight and Valentino, with, yes. Yeah, with um, Gwyneth and, and Whoopi and Kathleen Turner and Liz Perkins. So do you yes. remember the first, so let's talk about that. So you, you, I mean, you talk about it, but like, you're a hu- massive international superstar rock star, and then you go on the set of this movie, and it's a new thing that you've you've just been sort of learning about. That first day on set, that first take. Oh yeah. So I say I'll never forget it. The director was a guy named David Onspach who had done Hoosiers oh, sure. and mm-hmm. Rudy, mm-hmm. and um, so he was a guy's guy writing those kind of movies. He's got four ladies as his stars. 
I'm the cute, you know, house painter. We're doing take two, take three, take four. After the girls are giving him like one take a piece and walking off the set. Uh -huh. And he's going, take two, take three. And I walked over to him. I said, David, I'm sorry. We have to do so many takes. I'll pay for the film. He said, this is how we make movies. <laughs> I'll oh pay for God. the film. That's so sweet. Now, were you, were you, were you it must encouraged? have been nerve-wracking, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll bet it was nerve-wracking. But I'll, did you find some sort of encouragement and, and inspiration that, that there were – you weren't the first of like Sting and David Bowie. Were they did some great oh, performances? Yeah. Was that was that inspirational for you? No, because no. they'd all, by by definition, weren't successful. Mm -hmm. You may right. look back and think that those movies, you know, were cool, right? But yeah. you know, they were. We were as musicians told you do either or. Right. You know, Bowie and, and, and Madonna and whatever were, you know, no, there's musicians that want to act. They're not allowed to freely do both the way Sinatra could. But what were your expectations? You weren't, you weren't possibly looking to match your level of success with acting that you had. It wasn't music. based on success. It was based on opportunity. Okay. So right. that the opportunities mm -hmm. just kept going down and down and down. And then suddenly you're making like an indie to an indie. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting on the curb outside of CAA, like with a tear in my eye. <laughs> 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 but did going, you, what have I done? <laughs> but did you, did you find that, I mentioned that you were in the, uh, in the uh, Songwriters Hall of Fame. You're such a great songwriter and lyricist and music and everything. And did you, did you find when you were acting... Uh, throughout the years, the, did you find that sort of common thing as an artist, as you're doing it, sort of the beats of it? W w was there a commonality between being a performer, being a singer, songwriter, and being an actor? What was that kind of... I think there are commonalities, but again, I think the biggest thing to me was that finding something else in the arts that gave me an opportunity to grow. It wasn't like I went from singing to building cars. You know, one right, has nothing yeah, yeah. at all mm -hmm. to do with the other. This is another way to emote. This is another way to tell a story. This is uh, more information for me to write about because, you know, all I had to write about between 21 and 30 was life on the road, to be honest with you. Yeah. I was nowhere near as seasoned a, a man as... Bob Dylan or Woody Guthrie, you know, I was I was writing pop songs in a rock and roll band, you know, mm -hmm, in, a, mm -hmm. in a very sheltered middle American white suburban life. So, mm -hmm. you know, going and learning about, I don't know, Tennessee Williams and coming home and writing something and thinking, oh, you know, why did I get to write Blaze of Glory and, and the whole Young Gun soundtrack when my hands on a script? I know how to do that. Yeah, does know, it yeah. still does it still hold interest for you? Where does it sit now for you at the acting? I, I would I would have to stop doing music and go back to really working hard on the craft. You know, mm -hmm. when I, I have far too much respect for it to think, sure, send me a role, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Right. Well, is it sitting there sort of in second position to second as you, position? Uh, what as you start to see like, let's see how the voice does. And yeah. if they're yeah, and, and if and if the voice is not to your standards, maybe we can look forward to seeing more acting from you. I wouldn't yeah. be. I wouldn't yeah. say no for sure. I would just uh -huh. make sure I did it right. Yeah. What about producing music or pr producing uh, uh, other artists? I did all that like early that. on. I don't yeah. need it. I don't need any any more egos. Right. In the studio. Right. Yeah. I got a big right. enough one yeah. myself. Okay. Well, Sean, you can log off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, did you? I, forgive me. Um, did you see? Did you see the We Are the World documentary? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. Incredible. I want to I just, see that. All those people coming together. Wow. And I'd never even thought about that they were there through the night. Yeah, and I know. And at six I didn't in either. the morning, they're waiting for their solo line. And like, you yeah. know, Bruce and Cindy Lauper are just cockeyed still, just being good yeah. sports about well, it. Well, I, I mean, I, I, you were missed in that. I was like, where's... I was, I was just a little too young. Yeah, uh, it was, okay. I, I had two albums out by that point. I wasn't big enough. Oh, all right. I wasn't well, big enough yet. But go go back to the performing, like in big arenas and shows and stuff, and fans and dealing with fans and stuff like that. Is there any kind of was there any kind of um, moment? Have you ever had like any kind of crazy happening on stage with a fan that was just completely through the show? Sure. I mean, all the cliche, you know, <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yes, people screaming and. That kind of stuff is rushing you know, the stage. Girls throw you their underwear. I mean, you're the everybody got to be. Uh, uh, yeah, that's not that's not even original because you know what I mean. It's sort of every kid got to be Justin Bieber to Justin Timberlake right. all the way back yeah. to Elvis. You know, it just it's sure. 
I would Harry Styles, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, how sure. do you or any of those people you just mentioned avoid the intoxication and complete yeah. transitioning into well, I'm God, and it's never going to be yeah. anything different. And you end up buying the 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 ego that you, in retrospect, should have been renting. Um, but like, how do you avoid that big pitfall of it's never going to be any less than this? Because mm-hmm. you're you're in a you're in a, a four six or sorry three sixty of of uh, idolization that has got to be impossible to not or to make right size jump into yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, for me, it was... You seem so balanced. Not being there where y'all are. For me, that was one thing. When I bought the house in Staying Malibu. Staying out of California. Uh-huh. I bought the house on the beach in Malibu. And my wife and I looked at each other and said, not for me. You know, yeah. I, I, but I, because I knew what the lifestyle was. And we, we were caught up in it. At a lot of those people, you know, we had a house right on the beach, right? Yeah. We were all the, at the height of everybody's craziness. Yeah. And that was one of the things that we said, let's go back to New Jersey where there's no Joneses to keep up with. Right, gotcha. You know, let's go back to what we know. Yeah. You mentioned it, John, uh, your, your wife, Dorothea, who I've also had the uh, great uh, pleasure and honor of, of spending a little bit of time with and getting to know a little bit, and she's such an awesome person. And I was thinking, like, yeah, you, you, didn't, you didn't fall to any of those pitfalls. You grew up, I mean, and I, when I say grew up, I mean, like, sir, your 20s, those formative years, you were a massive star, was that, was, was you and Dorothea kind of, were you guys in it together? Did that help keep you grounded? Absolutely. We've been together since high school. Yeah. So um, wow. for us, that was, yeah, we grew together. Yeah. Yeah. So she's seen the whole ride. And, and then, you know, she didn't have to buy into something or I didn't have to doubt her commitment to it. And then I could fall in the gutter throughout the course of it and she could say, okay, I, I got it. I know why. And, you know, let's pick it up and go from here. So, yeah, I, I, I give her the credit for so much of it. Yeah. How lucky How lucky are you that you have that? You had this partner with you. Oh, I know. So, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, we're married 35 years already. Yeah. Bono went through this, the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah. With his wife. Yeah. Like, it's just in, incredible. Allie, yeah. So, yeah. John, I always, you know, we always talk about to people who are in the music world about, like, chicken and the egg. Do you write the lyrics? Do you write the music first? Talk about your process, like... What inspires you mm. to uh, write a certain way as opposed to other? And do you like your, your your voice is lends itself to ballads so much more than the other stuff, and it's all great. But you have such a lyric voice. Well, uh, thank you. Um, it, it's come both ways, but for me, um, I would like to say the just a slim majority of it comes from a title first, because for me that dictates the the feel of the wow. music. And then, you know, and then, you know, I, I write like a, something that you like, a, I, you, you know, wanted dead or alive is, is, you know, that yeah. kind of a feeling of an open D chord. It just, it just, it calls for that. And better roses would call for something else. You know, um, mm. that was, it was sort of meant to be written on a piano. Um, mm-hmm. But the process depends on, on the situation. And, and we had a record out in the midst of COVID called 2020. And it was a topical record. So it covered everything from gun control to George Floyd to COVID to an introspective topical record released into a black hole of COVID that I couldn't promote, it couldn't tour. And it's good that I was able to do that. I was very proud of it. This record post-surgery and in the process, because there's no happy ending yet, is that I'm finding joy for the first time in a decade. Oh, wow. I'm truly finding joy. I haven't had joy in a decade. Why? Why? And that why? Sucked wow. Because, because of the voice. Because of the voice. Uh, because yeah. Of the voice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was honored just recently at this Music Cares event two weeks mm-hmm. ago, three weeks ago out in LA. Uh, the Grammys pick one person to celebrate their catalog, and in my case, the philanthropy. Michael McDonald's in, involved with that. Yeah. Is yeah, and and um, and I was this year's not uh, uh, honoree, and on the Saturday morning after the night, I woke up and I, I was like, something's weird and i went i know what it is it's the first time in 10 years the only voice in my head was mine mm. no doubt no fear no second thoughts you know it's just i had fun last would night. you have would you have not uh, despite your despite the, the i would surgery. Have beat myself to shit for the last decade uh, but i would have dis- beat myself uh, i do it daily anyway yeah and i don't have yeah. anything wrong with i don't life. like that sean i'm 
fucking tired of it. Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me how you stop doing it because what it, beating well, yourself beating up. I, I, yeah, but you know what I always say? Like we were talking about this a while ago. Like uh, if 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 beating yourself up or putting yourself down, if that cured you, then we'd all be fixed, right? It doesn't work. Right. It just doesn't work. Oh, right. And it, you know, um, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to. Um, you know, stop that voice in your head that probably you're probably a perfectionist. And so anything yeah. less than you, you start beating yourself up. I always beat myself up when I leave any social event at all. I'll, I'll get in the car. I'll be like, God, was that okay? I said, I said that to that person. Mm, personality that hangover, we call it. Oh, personality hangover. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But Sean said to me once, he, I remember you, and you said, nobody's harder on me than myself. Yeah. And I said, give me a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true but john what was it john what was bringing on the the beating yourself up just that you weren't having access to do your stuff you know like you were just yeah yeah it was like you know i i i i i was saying that you know the only thing that's ever been up my nose is my finger and now suddenly god's taking away my tools and i'm, I'm like i'm yeah, at my yeah. wits end and and the crazy doctor says i don't know what it is and but I just gave you all my trust. Right, what do you mean right. you don't know what it is? Yeah. Now I'm aimlessly out there. Right. Take more drugs for it. Take another right. shot for it. Mm. Right. Sean right. can relate, right? And I'm yeah. going down this. I mean, I, when I did, I, not the recent Broadway show, but I did another music, I did a musical one too. What was it called? Promises, it called? Promises. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, thanks. And, uh, and I was on prednisone the, for a year. Yep. Yep. Just because you had a, it's always inflamed, always inflamed. It's no life. It's no life. No. And it gets you puffy, which and it gets you a little puffy. <laughs> oh, there's Jason. Yeah, there he is. That's why I never <laughs> took it. Um, I thought your mic was not working for a second. But. John, um, with the, the, um, the frustration of not being able to, you know, perform and, and go out there and do, you know, throw your fastball was is pro was probably at the same time that you were probably m more loaded with quality ideas and inspiration for yeah. stuff yeah. to write and yeah. just because I, I just find the older we get the smarter we get the better we are at everything and so uh, are you now sort of approaching a possible um where they match or you know i'm, I'm hoping yeah. i i think i'm on the verge i yeah. think i'm on the verge of that yeah these last right. couple of records that, that I couldn't fully celebrate. These last couple of records, I'm, I'm hoping and, and, and believing that um, I'm going to have that opportunity again when we do get to go out. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 the hope. Yeah, honestly, John, I, that attitude you you have that you kind of ooze positivity. I will say, I, I didn't realize that you were going through all this. And anytime I see you, you've always got such a great attitude. You you come into a room, you shine light, you ask people how they're doing. I love that about you. I think it's yeah. really great, and and I also know you do a lot of you do a lot of philanthropy as well, right? You you started you got the the John Bon Jovi uh, Soul Foundation, is that what it is? The foundation and the kitchens, yeah. And the kitchens. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is great. Talk to us a little bit about what you do. These guys don't know about this stuff. It's awesome. Kitchens. Um, a thousand years ago, twenty years ago, I used uh -huh. to own an arena football team. My aspirations oh, yeah. were to someday own an NFL team, and it was me cutting my teeth. Yeah. But in order to win in the in the community in Philadelphia, I said we got to be more philanthropic than everyone. So that sort of was my first foray into this. We started to find uh, something that anyone, everyone could relate to, which was affordable housing and hunger. And so I started to do that, and everybody was like, "Yeah, bravo, good job." You know, Habitat for Humanity does this every day. Right. When the economic downturn of two thousand eight happened, Dorothea said, "Now you got to feed the people in the houses you've built." And I was like. Mm. Hmm. And in stream of consciousness, she just lays out a plan for this thing that we now call the JBJ Soul Kitchens. Simply put, if any of you guys came and laid 30 bucks on the table, it would cover your meal and the meal of somebody else who can't afford to pay. It, it empowers people because we ask them if they can't pay anything to volunteer. And if you guys were to come and didn't volunteer, you'd sort of think you're missing the party because mm -hmm. everybody's working in the garden or bussing a table or washing a dish, um, folding napkins. It's not difficult labor, but when they feel empowered mm -hmm. and they've earned the, the, the certificate to not only pay for their meal, but perhaps it's a kid, he comes back with his entire family and you've got that pride in a 
teenager bringing his family back and feeding them. It's all farm to table. We take no government subsidies. So we did our first one in an auto body shop that we converted into this restaurant. Second one we built after Hurricane Sandy hit in New Jersey here, and we have all the service providing around it, a food pantry, a food bank, culinary program. Then the third one and the fourth one, this blows people's minds, are on college campuses. Because we were aware, but most people think, wait a minute, I just sent my kid to the university. Well, guess what? They're not necessarily eating ramen by choice. They don't have any money. Right. You know, so we came to that realization many years ago and we put one on two different university campuses here in New Jersey. So we currently have four of those restaurants. And then myself or our foundation fund the shortfall. And we've been doing that for 12, 13 years now. That's so cool. That my is... my mom started a, she, she was one half who started a, a food bank for people in the Chicagoland area called Northern Illinois Food Bank, very similar to what you're doing. And, um, and that's kind of her legacy, and she's still remembered there. It's part of Second Harvest, which I'm sure you yeah, know. Uh, right, and I, yeah. Yeah, and, and I bet you it gave her hard work but great joy. <laughs> Wait, no, well, no, Will, I want to go first. So, what, so she was just sort of half um, uh, on her. She, she just kept an eye on, on, um, on part of I was going to say well. she, could, she, could, she could have called it eye on hunger. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sean's mom. Sean, my tell, mom had tell one John. eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus! God. It's just it's well, a she nice had little. Two. She, she had two. One of them was wooden. Right. One of them was no, it wasn't wood. wooden. It was no, glass. It was glass. Will, it was glass. Sick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we actually hey. he brought it out on stage yeah. and we held it. The eye. Yeah, yeah. it's in, in a nice mom's box. eye. We held yep. it. Yeah, it's for real. Box. Nice guys. Nice guys. You call them your friends. But wait, so John, what the hell? What the hell's Bon Jovi? Is that what nationality is that? What the hell is Bon Jovi? What kind of question what is that? Fuck? Sean, can I talk to you for a what, second? What the hell is Bon Jovi? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I, it's, I, it's, it's Italian. It's okay, Italian, since I was a kid, B-O-N-G-I. I thought you made that name up. Listen, B O N G I O V I. Oh, really? B O N G I O V I. B O N. Yeah. The same way. G I, which in Italian phonetics is the J sound. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's pronounced yeah. the same way, but it's B O N G I instead of a J. And it's O-V-I. always been two separate words. No, 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 no. It's it's the silly American that couldn't figure it out. And in in truth, when I got the record deal and I had gotten the band together to help me play Runaway because I had it on the radio um, all over the country. Yeah. Um, I went to the record company. Said we got an idea. It should, you know, it should be you. And I went, how about if it's we? And if you remember Van Halen, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, we make it two words. Oh, yeah. very good. Like, this is good. Oh, so that's great. In truth, <laughs> there was a little bit of the, it, it was a little bit of that in the 80s because I didn't want to be a solo artist. I really knew that that's too much heat. Yeah. 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 I mean, because when I was a kid, I thought it was, you guys were all related. The worst guy on the and that the worst fair weather fan will come up to you on the street and go, "Hey, Bon." <laughs> no, it's not Bon, motherfucker. <laughs> You're not a, not a very big fan. <laughs> hey, on the uh, on the on 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 the music uh, industry business sort of end because our industry is going through a, a, a bit of a transition now. Your business was started much earlier with the transition. Um, it, how do you feel that that the industry is is doing and adapting? Are you a fan of of the current state of things? I think we've at least hit a place now where um, there's stability. Mm. You know, the, we, I, I, I've said it before. We, my band and I at this time and the, those around our period, uh, were there for what was called the gold rush, you yeah. know, when CDs were invented and everybody bought their record collection again and you could sell 20 million copies of an album. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have been in the, in the heat of that. Yeah. Nowadays, because they finally settled on streaming, um, I'm okay with it. You know, I, I wish and I blame Apple for breaking up the CD, the work of art, the book. They sold you one chapter of the book at a time instead of the entire book. Yeah. I was always pissed off about that. And their attitude was, we're going to sell you one song at a time so you don't have to buy the whole album. Well, wait a minute. I just wrote the whole album. I'm excited about the whole album. I want to present it as a whole. So I've always been pissed off since that, the advent of the iPod. But I think we've we've reached this stable place with streaming. And And in this current state of affairs for the young talent, what was 
also daunting was that the record companies now aren't signing you because you just wrote a great song. They want to know how many likes you've got on social media, which is a sin. Yeah. Yeah. But it, on the other hand, it, it affords the world the opportunity to have another Bob Dylan because there was a period in time where unless you sounded like you could sing on American Idol, mm -hmm. you weren't going to get a record deal. Right. So right. the internet allows for a Bob Dylan. The streaming allows for some stability, even though it's a low rate, but it's it's something. And this is the new world order. So but it's obligating you guys yeah. to go out and do a bunch of touring in order to make a bunch of money, and that's kind of exhausting. It's still as criminal as it ever was. It, it's 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 harder on the young band. And how are they going to support themselves on the road if they don't have any record money or there's yeah. tour support and all the things that we had forty years ago that they're not going to have now? I, I I I've heard and have been in on conversations, but it's obviously not something I can directly relate to. It's not as big a business for the young kid coming up. It's like, I get to do that, but I'm also going to have to do this yeah. and this in order to make a it's living. It's the same with all, all entertainment. You know, it feels like you have to learn how to I do think, it yeah, I think about it all the time of like starting as a young actor today, as opposed to when we started out and you could go out and you get a job, you audition for stuff, you were in the mix, you audition for pilots, you may get a movie, but do all that. Because now it's such a free for all. You know, yeah, or you could do a commercial and you could expect thirty thousand dollars by the time yeah, it's done. It's could, run like now. It's all non-union and yeah. You know. Yeah, you could do a Golden Grahams commercial. You know what I mean? Oh I mean, yeah. Has anybody ever done a Golden Grahams yeah, commercial? Yeah, I'm on in that? a son in a go kart in that <laughs> one. <laughs> my 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 son is a young aspiring actor, and he would have that magic when he walked into a room for an audition. But because he came up during COVID and now. Everything is on these Zooms. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that all those casting agents are missing out on the personality of the I young agree. actor or actress coming totally in agree. and winning your heart, not just reading their lines. I will totally tell agree. you, I will tell you though, I'm in the middle of casting something right now. And th uh, none, of, none of these casting sessions are in person. They're all on Zoom. Yeah. And I am so jealous that the, that the actors are not stuck in what was always for me the most stressful thing I could ever do. Was yeah, walking, that's true was, too. was waiting in the, in the lobby, hearing the actor before me doing it, killing, them being late, me going over my sides and over my sides and then going in, having to do the, the bullshit talking with them and now I'm sweating and I'm having to be, and then I got to switch into acting gear and then I got to do, then they get, like, it was so nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact that they get to do it on Zoom now, I, to me is like, it's, it's well, much I think less stressful. I, but I think there's yeah. always been a flaw in that, Jay, because it, you shouldn't just put all the actors up for the same role in one room. It's just, you know, yeah. is there another way to do it? Like schedule them? The whole like thing separately? is torture. Yeah, yeah. it's just I, I don't know, but there's something to also going through that experience. You know, after, as somebody who, I grew up in, the, in New York in the 90s, in my 20s, and, and went on a million auditions yeah. and bombed a bunch. And I learned so much from that process. Right. And mm. then also, conversely, when I did have start having success, I really appreciate it. It wasn't until my 30s that I had any success. And I really appreciate it because I had gone through that sure. for so many yeah. years and was starving. And you know. your I also made some friends during the process. So they're missing out on that. I made too. a lot of friends. Yeah. yeah. Right. A lot of friends. Yeah. I just think that they miss the personality. You know, yeah, I agree, Sean. I, I, wooing that casting agent some and letting yeah, yeah. them see that spark. And knowing whether they're going to be a problem on set. Do they have, Perhaps. are they nice people? Yeah. yeah. John, I think that that's, I, I think that you're totally onto something. I think there, I, I was also just thinking about what you were saying before about, about albums and when you would write an album. And I was just thinking like, you, you remember that feeling, you really hit on something, that feeling as a kid of getting an album and taking it home, and yeah. taking the plastic off yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and taking the sleeve out, yeah, and reading the lyrics, that. and listening to every freaking song. Yeah. yeah. How does it start? And then How does the, it start? And the third yeah. song. Is it my imagination, or is the third song always one that kicks your That's ass? That's the single. Right? That's the yeah. single. Yeah. Okay. All right. Was is it? that, wait, I didn't know that. Is that by design? It just happens to be this sort of commonplace. You kind of yeah, start slow the and then books. you nail them. And then, yeah, and then there's a, there's, a, there's a balance. Living on a second. Prayer was the third track on Was Slipper. it really? There you go. Yeah. You hey, give me the first note. Are you by piano or a guitar or anything? Give me the first note of the chorus. Sean, are you going to sing? I'm going to try oh. it. Oh, oh, please. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Well, we're out of time, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm not and, that uh, close. I, 
Now you're on. Stay tuned for Smartless Extras <laughs> where you can enjoy some of Sean's. <laughs> Okay. Minor. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, got it. Couldn't you hear that? Well, yes. Well, I had to run across the room and bang on the wait, piano, but well, wait, 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 Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so high, it's crazy. <laughs> you know what you do then is you hold the microphone out. <laughs> just sounds like the mic out. Yeah, yeah. It just sounds high. like you're furious. Let, let the all. audience <laughs> let the audience do it. You hold the mic over the audience, you hold go the mic out. Buzzy, yeah, you right. give dogs a bad name. But John, you know what? Whenever your songs come on the radio in the car, I will pretend I'm you and I will scream my head off. Love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. It's impossible, impossible not to just absolutely belt out one of your songs, John, when they come on. It's I just the best. Uh, dude, we've taken up too much of your time already. You're so such much a, fun. Uh, you're the man. John, when you're coming to town, let's hang out. I would love that. Nothing you're would never make coming me happy. back. You're never coming Very back. Very brave. Don't give no, me your let's do it. I, No, I, let's I, do it in New York. <laughs> let's do it in New York. In New York. That would be uh, great. That'd be awesome, and then uh, and then we'll do we'll do it. J, uh, JB's in New York uh, for the next six months. Year. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Let's please, get please. together. Cool guys. I, I, I was, this was really a joy. Thanks for I, doing likewise, it. Likewise, likewise. Thank you, John. Cool, you're man. such a great dude. You're such great a fans. such a cool dude. Yeah, and such a such a great artist. And thank you for taking the time. And thank you. All. Uh, wish you all the best, man. Can't wait to see you again. Thanks, guys. Thank you, John. All right, have a good one. Bye now. Bye, right, pal. Ah, oh, the great John Bon Jovi. He's great. So fucking easy. They don't make them like that anymore. You know, I mean, great, gr the great John Bovi, John, jo John Bon Jovi is just wait, sounds like a little like we need one, we need a better word than great. Yeah. Right? JB, you were just, yeah. Yeah. What do you, how do you, yeah, I just said the great John Bon Jovi, but you're right. It, it doesn't seem like it's enough. Right. Well, because I mean, well, and who's doing it? What, what they did, who's doing that today? There, there isn't a size of a band no, I today know. like that. It's all sort of, like been um, diluted a bit. I didn't even ask him about like the prep for a show with the hairspray and the hair and the outfits and the those were all wigs, the... all wigs. He's no, just got the <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, um, uh, yeah, no. That's, uh, super easy to hang out with. Yeah, he, he's yeah. Such a good where did guy. you where did you meet him? Well, I met him. We have a a bunch of mutual friends, and obviously Long um, Island, and just yeah, just over the years. And he is one of those guys. Every time you see him, he's he's just. Um, He's very sort of uh, warm and and uh, uh, very generous uh, with people. Actually, one time I had lunch with him years ago. We were down on vacation, and uh, and Archie was maybe a year old. Feels and, like this could be a St. Bart story. Go ahead. Yeah. And <laughs> we were down on vacation, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he and he got uh, and he got. Um, Archie got like all these like little bites all over. We didn't know what was going on. We were freaking out. You know, you've got a one-year-old and you're like, what's going on? We're in the middle of nowhere. And John helped us sort of uh, call a friend who had knew, you know, got us in, you know, to get him looked at. It was great. He was very sweet. Oh, I love he's that. A very sweet guy. Very yeah, he's, he seems super cool. You know, yeah. uh, that Slippery When Wet album was sure. so huge. That's where that Living on a Prayer song was. But there was another song on there. Oh my God! Here, here we go. And it was here called. And it really, it's a real song. Is it? Oh, I know. I know. Do you have, I'm sorry. Do you have another appointment? Because yeah, yeah. no, is quick, it's but called. Ahead. Never called? say. What? Good. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. It's a real song. <laughs> We're gonna. What? You know, it's a real song. Nickname, you know what your nickname is? Shoehorn. Because you just try to <laughs> shoehorn. You're always looking for a way out. We always got you on the tail. Are you late? <laughs> no. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smartless.